In one word, can we just pray and ask the Lord, our Father, Lord, send your word to me tonight in the name of Jesus. For every individual, there is a word. There is a word. Can you ask the Lord, our Father, send your word to me tonight in the name of Jesus. I refuse to go back just the way I came in the name of Jesus. Reveal yourself to me through the ministry of your word in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So, um, briefly, I'm going to be, I'm going to be checking through God's word again tonight on the topic God's Lady, God's Lady. But before we dig into the word of God, I want us to understand this night that we have an identity in God. Yes, that's what I want us to establish. The fact this night that each and every one of us we have an identity in Christ. Yes, we have an identity in Christ. Yes, there's a picture of you in God's mind and it will be important for you to know that God's dealing with you will be based on your true identity. Yes, your identity is not just a title. Your identity is not just what people call you. Your identity is your placement in God. Your identity is the you in you. I want us to understand that fact tonight. And I want us to get ourselves prepared I want us to get our, our mind prepared for, for what God is set to do in our midst tonight. This night, God is about to reveal our identity to, to us, our real self to us. As we get set for an encounter, God will begin to reveal our inner self to us, who we really are in God. Your identity is your inner makeup. Your identity is your inner makeup. A God lady is a lady that is fully empowered by God. Being a God kind of lady is God's initial makeup and God's design for every genuine child of God. Yes. So the question we should now ask ourselves is that who exactly I am? Who exactly do God say I am? Who exactly I am? Very many people don't really understand what they are, who they are, and what they stand to represent in the kingdom. And because of this, the devil has cheated and 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 then um, mesmerized so many believers. Though they call the name of God, but yet they don't have, they don't know who they really are. I want you to understand tonight that your identity is not what men say about you. Your identity is what God says about you and who God sees you to be. Not who men calls you. You should be concerned more about who God calls you and not what men calls you. There is an ideal God lady. There is an ideal picture that God had in mind when he was forming you in his image. And you must begin to walk in that reality to learn. This evening, I'll be showing us 24 stabilizing news that you can hammer into the character of your life to make up a godly lady. Yes, a godly lady is, is a god lady. Yes, a godly lady is one who is aware of identity in Christ. Once you are not aware of your identity in Christ, then you are not in God. A god lady or a godly lady is one that is moved by faith and not by sight one that is fired by love a godly lady is a woman of god is a woman like god i want you to understand tonight that you cannot be a woman of god if you are not a woman like god you cannot be like god you cannot be a god's lady when you are not like god also a god lady is one that loves the world yes you must be a lover of the world you must be a lover of the world. You must be a lover of the world. You must be one who has the spirit of God in you, residing right inside of you. You must also be a woman of humility. A God lady is not just a title. A God lady is not just a name. Yes, it is. It is an identity. I want us to understand that tonight. A God lady is one who also carries the image and the identity of God. A God lady is also one that is who is a woman who can be called to be a woman of prayer. A prayerless person, generally, or a prayerless woman is a godless woman. A prayerless person or a prayerless woman is a godless person. A God lady can also be someone who is said to be a woman of sincerity, one who is heavenly conscious, one who is serious, patient, and thankful, one who loves the same a good relationship with people and most especially with God, one who does spiritual things in spiritual manner, one who also works with the Lord, who has a walk with God. You can't call yourself a God lady when you don't have a walk with God, when you don't have a relationship with God. And most most importantly, a God lady is one who has been bought with a price, that person that has been bought with a price. 
I want us to understand tonight that situations around you shouldn't shape you. Situations around you shouldn't give you names. Titles shouldn't deceive you. Very many Christians and sisters, so to say, have earthly titles but no identity in God. They are not known at the corridors of heaven. The question we should all ask ourselves tonight is who am I? Who am I really? Who am I? So many believers today have been carried away by they've been carried away by what people call them. Okay, they say yes, I'm a pastor, I'm a chorister, I'm this, I'm that. That's all people know you to be. That's all people know you to be. You they only know you by your earthly titles, but they don't know you by that name that God has called you to be. Today is the night where people are going to be getting their, their they are going to be getting their true identity in God. God is beginning to give people their identity tonight. If all you have as a believer, if the names you have alone as a believer are just your earthly titles, then you are failed. You are failed. What's most important to you is your identity in God. What's most important to you is your identity in God. Look at David in the Bible. God called him a man after God's own heart. God called him a man after God's own heart. What what has God called you to be? What name has God really given you? What name has God really given you? It is high time we stop leveraging on what men has called us to be. Can we just find our real identity tonight at the feet of Jesus? Can we just find our real identity? There is an identity. There is a there is a picture in the mind of God that God really wants us to begin to walk in that reality. That people call you Momiji or woman of God is not enough. But have you really found your identity? Have you really found what God has really called you to be? Let us strive to be called by God's name and not men's title and accolade. Let us begin. Let us from this point begin to die to the accolades of men and titles of men, and begin to embrace God, God's God's image, God's identity for us. Very many people have been where they are today because of identity crisis. They don't really know who they are, and until you have found your identity, you can't walk in the reality and in the part of that identity. Many believers have given themselves name, but they don't. They give themselves name, but they have not really. Get gotten a name from God. They've not been ordained by God. When I say ordained now, I'm not really I'm not saying called into the pastor, but they have not been ordained by God. They don't really, and that's why most believers today, most ladies today, that's why they misbehave. It's very important to note that the environment you find yourself, the place you find yourself, sometimes my my affect the name that people call you, whether you like it or not. I want to I want to I want to give this illustration tonight. I want us to understand that whether you like it or not, that sometimes that the environment you find yourself we we attach a name to you, but you'll not be carried away with that name that men has called you. You'll not be carried away by the name that environment and situations have called you. When a when a woman marries a president, who a president who is a number one citizen, automatically there is a change of name for her. But beyond that name, she also needs to come into the realization of that name. She becomes a first lady because she's married to the president. She can bear that name, she can carry that title, and yet not look like it. The reason she will not look like it is because she has not come into the consciousness and into the reality that she doesn't know, and she doesn't might not really know the weight or the gravity of that name. So I want us to understand one fact tonight, that you can be a child of God. In fact, you can be born and bred in church, giving your life to church, not miss any service in church, and the devil will still keep pressing you and oppressing you. It's not anybody's fault but your fault, because you give the devil a chance by our ignorance and inadequacies. Beloved, Christ has called you by his name, and he has called you his own. Therefore, let's begin to walk in this reality and come into the realities of this man who are not just the title. You being a God lady is not just by title or by mere confession. It is that you begin to act out that image of God as God's lady. You are not ordinary as a lady. You have been bought with a price. Remain as one. You are God's lady. You are a royal priest to the holy nation. And that's how I want us to understand tonight that there is power in your identity. Once the devil comes to understand that you, you you understand the power in that identity, then he will not be able to mess around with you. Don't just have a godly name. Carry the essence of that name that you carry as a believer. When you check through that scriptures in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, 
it says having a form of godliness but yet denying the power thereof if we check through that scripture what i what i want us to understand from that scripture tonight is that having a form of godliness there is like having a godly title but yet empty you are god's son so you should reflect this in every of your endeavors Checking through our anchor scripture for this theme, for this topic, God's Lady, that's in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Scripture says, Who can find? Who can find? Who can find a virtuous woman? For her prize is far above rubies. It will mean that this breed of women, this breed of lady, are scarce. They are really scarce. Because you have to find them. You have to find them. It will therefore mean that virtuous women are scarce. The reason why they are scarce is not because it's not because they don't it's not because very people many many people don't carry that title okay i'm a virtuous lady it's in short in every of our conventions we carry we give ourselves different titles different themes for our program but yet after such meeting do we still go in that consciousness of being a virtuous woman it's not just about the title now but the content of of who you appear to be carrying the title the kind of breed for this species of ladies, the kind of, of breeds for this species of women are very scarce. I said it the other time. They are scarce because you can you cannot just you cannot just buy them. You can't you can't buy them. You can't just stumble on them anyhow. So we, we must begin to we must begin to we must begin to replicate, we must begin to reproduce this 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 identity. We must begin to reproduce it and begin to we must begin to reproduce it to everybody around us and let everybody catch this life. As a lady, I want us to understand that afflictions cannot buy you. Afflictions shouldn't give you names. Failure shouldn't force themselves from you because you carry you carry an identity because you are you have already been bought. The reason why circumstances have a way of caging us and renaming us and redefining who we really are is because we are ignorant of the fact that we have been bought by a spiritual entity. This is for someone listening to me tonight. God is said to give you a new name. He is said to make your real identity known to you. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. God is ready to make himself real to you. He is ready to reveal himself to you tonight. Kingdom identity is not a naming ceremony. It's not a name that you just speak on the street and name by yourself. It is a name that can only be revealed by your maker. Because he's the only one that has the map, the, the map of your life with, in his hands. So it is not just names that you get of anyhow it is revealed in the secret place so i want us to go back to the secret place and find our real identity in christ god has called us his his his, his own he said we are god's lady we are really working in this consciousness want us also to understand that until you know your identity others cannot know it it is the way you it's the way you this is that like it is the way you dress that you'll be addressed until you know it no one else can know it for you so you need to go back to that secret place and, and fetch it out and dig it out. The Bible speaking in Ruth chapter 1 verse 20, it says, And she said to them, Call me not Naomi, that is pleasant. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I know we are very familiar with that story, the story of um, Ruth in the Bible. At a point where Ruth was really challenged with so many things around her. She came to a conclusion. She made a confession. We checked through that verse 20. She said, she said, and she said to them, Call me not Naomi. Naomi, dear, if you check the meaning of Naomi, Naomi means pleasant. That's the name that God that's the name that God has called her. That's the name that God has has, has called her. God has called her, God has called her pleasant. That's a spiritual identity in Christ. But because of situations around her, she changed the name for herself. She said, call me Mara, that is bitter, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Relating it to our today's, to our today's world, and if, if, we were to be, if we were to be Naomi, we should, assuming we are in Naomi shoes, sometimes I understand that we have, sometimes as ladies, we have faced with so many challenges. That, Naomi was also in the same, was also in the same shoe. She was also in the same shoe. She was also faced with challenges. But she didn't know how to handle that challenge. She said, she said at that point, she said, Don't call me God's lady. Don't call me Abbas beloved. Don't call me battle axe. She began to throw away those names, those identities that God has God has deposited into her, that God has revealed to her. She threw them away because of because of hard times, because of hardship. 
she said don't call me don't call me a royal priesthood don't call me a holy nation call me bitter imagine call me bitter he said for the almighty has dealt very bitterly with me that's the case with so many very many of us she rejected who God has called her to be because of her current situation. She felt she was miserable and couldn't maintain her peace. That's the way very many of us are today. We have lost touch of our identity. Not because God didn't give it to us, but we deliberately threw it into the mud because of situations and the things that we have around. And the situations that we couldn't bear and we threw them in the mud. I know in our minds we might be asking that, does God, does God really give people names? Yes. He, re- he gives people name, but you need to ask for it. In Genesis chapter 17, 15, down the line to 17, we could see there that God God gave Abraham a name. He gave Abraham and, and, and his wife Sarah a name. So it means if God can give Abraham a name, then he can also give us a name. I don't, I, it's not the time to look down on ourselves and rubbish ourselves. God can bring us out of that merry clay and give us a new name. And give us a new name and redefine our purpose, redefine our life, redefine who we really are, redefine our stand and our identity in Christ. If we open our Bible to Genesis 17, chapter 15, down the line to 17, we saw how God rebranded Sarah and gave her a new identity. If you open the place, if you read down, it says, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings shall come for, from her, meaning she shall be a mother of kings. That was Sarah's identity. That was Sarah's name. That was who she really was in Christ. But if we check the life of Sarah, at a point, Sarah, Sarah was really, she was, she was clouded by the situations around her. She was clouded by her barrenness. She was clouded by her barrenness, and because of that, she couldn't wait. She do, she do, could, she couldn't stand on the identity of Christ. It is high time we lay hold on that identity. It's high time we lay hold on that identity. At a point, Sarah couldn't hold on, and that was what brought about Ishmael. That's what brought about Ishmael. The identity we don't, the identity you don't stick to, we bet an Ishmael. That's just it. The identity you don't lay hold on, we bet an Ishmael. Because Sarah couldn't lay hold, she couldn't walk in the reality of that identity. That was what brought about the story of Ishmael. I want us to understand that sometimes you might not look like what God has called you to be, but just maintain, 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 maintain. He He knows why He called you that name. He knows why you. He knows why you called you that name. He knows why you he said the better is the end of the thing than the beginning. So just stick to it. You don't need to, you don't really need to understand, but just stick to it. There is there is there is there's fruitfulness in obedience. Yes. There's fruitfulness in obedience. There's fruitfulness in obedience. Don't let your situations give you name. Don't let your peers give you name. The real you will soon emerge. Just keep pressing. Keep pressing. Scripture says, I think it's in Job, it says there is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, it will surely spring up again. It will surely spring up again. It will surely spring. God is interested in you. God has a name for every individual. God has God God has God has a purpose for every individual. God has an identity for every individual. Because when a thing is made, there is always a name attached to it. When a table is made, there is a there is a name attached to it. That's why we that's why we call it table table today. So when you were made, there was a name. There was an identity given to you. So, but if you don't, if you don't find that identity, you will keep misbehaving. You will stick. You will keep being a tool in the hands of the enemy to 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 molest and to and to oppress. One of the ways to come out of the out of the cage and the and 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 the and the hands of the devil is is by is by is by knowledge is by understanding of your identity, your true identity in Christ. For someone, God is reminding you again. For someone, God is reminding you again that you are God's lady. Yes, you are God's lady. You are God's lady. I don't know who that person is, but you are God's lady. Begin to walk in that reality. Don't look down on yourself. This is an assignment for someone listening to me tonight. Just in case you have not found your your real identity, or just in case you have lost it, or just in case you are, you don't even look like what God has called you to be, I want you to continue to meditate on this scripture. First Peter chapter two verse nine. Say to yourself, put your name there. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show for the praise of him that who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Keep confessing it. Keep keep, keep confessing it. Keep walking in this re, in this reality. Keep walking in it. Keep, keep confessing. Keep confessing. Keep confessing. And you see yourself walk into this identity. You see yourself walk into this marvelous light that God has called you into. Don't forget, the knowledge of your identity keeps the devil far away from you. The knowledge of your identity keeps failure far away from you. The knowledge of your identity keeps afflictions far away from you and brings favor close to you and brings all the good tidings that God has that God has said about you. He brings it more closer to you. If you can see it, you can become it. If you can see it, you can become it. As we round off tonight, because of our time, I want us to I want us to practicalize. I want us to, I want us to confess some things to ourselves. Don't just say this. Mean it and let the devil hear it and stand on it and begin to walk in it. As we round up, can you begin to say to yourself, I was born for a reason. I am not a biological accident. I have a mandate. I have an assignment. I have an anointing. I have a destiny. There is something about my life. I am not useless. I am God's lady. I am God's own. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation, a peculiar people. I am priceless. I know who God says I am. I am revival. I am a chosen generation. This is who I am.